Hello, I'm Debbie Gatlin, and I want to thank you for taking time to count the Omar with me. The counting of the Omar is a seven-week period between Pesach and Shavuot, and it's a time of reflection. It's a time of, of examining in your heart. It's a time that you're preparing your heart to receive more of God from His Word and more of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to keep that Word, to be witnesses for the Lord. So during this time period, we say Psalm 67 every night. And I love this Psalm. God be gracious to us and bless us. Cause your face to shine upon us that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation to the nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For the earth has yielded its produce. God, our God, he blesses us. He blesses us that all the earth would what? Fear him. Fear him. This is the God we serve, a God that wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing. And tonight, the blessings that we will say, if you're Jewish, this is the traditional way to say it. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments and commanded us to count the Omar. Now, if you're a Gentile believer in Yeshua, the Messiah, this is what you'd say. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us through Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and commanded your people to count the Omar. Now we're talking this time about glory and splendor. And we talked about what glory means. It's the weightiness, the splendor of God. It's used to speak of God's worth, his loveliness and his grandeur. And all of his many, many perfections. God is amazing in every way. There's no flaw in him. He is altogether lovely. There's nothing, nothing dark in him. He's light. He's glory. He's goodness. Come on. And we're talking about tonight that God says his glory is his goodness. Let me read this to you one more time. Exodus 33, 18 through 19, where Moses said, I pray you show me your glory. I love that. Again, we talked about in the last time of counting the Omar, how Moses, he was in love with God. And what did he want? He wanted to see the glory of God. God is looking for people that want to see the glory of God. So he says to the Lord, I pray you show me your glory. And the Lord said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious to, and I will show, com show compassion on whom I will show compassion. So tonight we're going to talk about how God's glory is his goodness. Now goodness, when you think of goodness, you think of wholesomeness. You, you think, oh man, that's good. It's like everything that's right, everything that's just, everything that's righteous. Come on, everything that's delightful. I mean, that is about God's goodness. So goodness, here's a definition in the Hebrew. It says good. In the widest sense, especially goodness. So in the wide, wideness, widest sense, you know, God's good, but then he's especially good. And it says he's beautiful, gladness, welfare, goodness, good things, joy that go well, goodness, good, 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 goodness, good things. There's good and, and there's like I had this song that I sang for little kids. It says God is bigger than big. He's bigger than bigger. He's bigger than the biggest. God is so much bigger. Well, that's what good is. He's all of those things to be happy, to be pleasant, to be delightful. Come on, let's keep going to be better, to be well, to be good for, to be pleasing, to do well, do good, act right, to, to act rightly. And then it says beautiful, best, better, bountiful, cheerful, at ease, pleasant, pleasing, pleasure, precious, sweet, wealth, welfare, better, and agreeable. Come on. You can keep on going, welfare, benefit, good, prosperity, bounty, kind, good, understanding, prosperous, happy. Unless you can keep on going. God is what? He is good. He is good. And he wants us to be people that long for his goodness. We want to see the glory of God. We want to see his goodness on earth. Come on, as it is in heaven. 
he told his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Psalms 25, 7 through 8 says, Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your loving kindness, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. What? God's good. Good. His goodness, what? It will wash away your sins. It'll cover them. In the Old Testament, they were covered. In the New Testament, well, we know that God is so good that he loved us so much that he gave his only son. And Jesus Christ's blood, his precious living blood, cleanses us. I love, I love God's goodness. You know what I love about God's goodness? When you know that God is good, when you know that he is good, you can expect good. I love the one scripture in Psalms that said, I would have despaired unless I would believed I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have despaired unless I believed I'd see the goodness of God in the land of the living. If you know that God is good, if you know that that is his glory, then you know what? You have this little spring in your step. And in spite of all the hardship and difficulties, you know that your God is a good God and that he loves you. You're his precious one, his precious, precious one. It says Psalms 34, 8. I love this. (laughs) It says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is is the man who takes refuge in him. And that means to drink deeply of his goodness. You're so good, God. You are so, so good. Then it says, Psalms 84, 11, And there's so many scriptures about the Lord is good. The Lord is good. God is good. Psalms 84, 11, For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. I love that that one of the, the things that God's goodness is, is his generosity. He is so loving and giving. He is generous. Psalms 106, 1, and this is the, the subtitle below it is Israel's rebellion and God's deliverances, or could I say God's goodness showed to the children of Israel in spite of this hand of rebellion. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is what? He's good. What is the Lord? He's good. And his loving kindness is everlasting. I love the one scripture that's that in Lamentations that says, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases, nor his compassions, they never fail. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Well, what is he talking about? Well, loving kindness, but can I tell you, that's God's goodness too. God's goodness you know what? Every day it's fresh. It's new. You can expect the loving kindness, the goodness of God to be poured over your life. If you just, just receive, if you just believe in the goodness of God, his glory is his goodness. Let me say that again. When Moses said, Lord, if I found favor in your sight, let me see your glory. And the Lord says, I will make all my goodness pass before you. My goodness God is looking for people. You're looking for his goodness. You're wanting his goodness. You know what? He's a God that will pour out his goodness. He's a good, good God. And I love this. This is in Joel. And this is when the second chapter, the book of Joel speaks of the judgment of the Lord coming on Israel for their rebellion against God. But you know what? Joel knew something. He knew this, that God is good. God is a good, good God. He's good. So in spite of all this judgment that the Lord says, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, Joel goes, and yet even now, and yet even now, I love that. God says, well, this is going to happen. And Joel's like, I know who you are. You're the God that when you were going to destroy the people of Israel, Moses prayed. And you're like, okay, I'll just, I'll forgive them. Over and over, what? God relented of calamity. He relented of evil that he was going to do because of rebellion and sin and disobedience and evil that was being done. God relented of that because of people turned to him and looked for his what? His goodness. It says this, Joel 2, 12 through 13, And yet even now, declares the Lord, 
Return to me with all your heart and with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rent your hearts. What's God want? Oh, he wants, is, he wants your heart. He wants to fill your heart with his goodness. Rent your heart and not your garments. You are returned to the Lord your God. He is gracious and compassionate. He's gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and relenting of evil. What? Your God is good. And if you read the rest of Joel, the second chapter, you find out that as they're praying to God and, and crying out to the Lord, he says this, that God Almighty turns everything around and he, instead of bringing those things upon the children of Israel because of their rebellion against him, as they humble their hearts, God brings blessing. Their vats overflow with new wine and their threshing floors are full and he restores what the canker worms eaten away. He reigns upon them with his reign, the former and the latter reign he reigns upon them. He says that's their vindication, the reign. Now, God is a good God and what? God's glory is his goodness. And God wants you to walk in that glory, to look for that glory, to look for his goodness because his goodness is what? It's new every morning. His loving kindness, his goodness is new every morning. Now, let's keep counting the Omar together. God bless you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.